What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the Wake Up Wealthy Podcast. We are sitting here at the office of Sports One Marketing. David Meltzer's here with us. Dave, how are you? Amazing. I'm so glad that you're here on your super podcast road trip. Yeah, absolutely, man. And I really appreciate you letting us come by, giving giving us the opportunity to interview you. Uh, and I want to dig right into it. I think that everyone here know, knows your story. You've worked with not some, but all of the biggest names in sports for the last couple decades. And uh, dude, you're the man. You're the man <laughs> to go to in sports. But what has interested me most of, about you, you actually dubbed yourself before we went live here, the, the oldest man on Instagram. And um, dude, I love the way that your brand has exploded. And I love the message that you've take with it and really how you've branded yourself because nobody else around your age is doing it. Right. And n- nobody even on very few people on social media are taking that spiritual path, that path of gratitude and really promoting that when it's a message that matters. It's a message that gets results more so than anything else in life. And what I want to know is how you got onto that message. Like how long have you been this dialed in spiritually? How long has gratitude been your entire ethos? Like when did that happen? You know, what happened to me was before I lost everything, you know, a lot of people know my background, but in case they don't, I was a multimillionaire nine months out of law school, 32 head of the first smartphone division, and I lost my way. Right. I, so I had gratitude in my life up until I had everything. And then mm-hmm. that's the first time I wasn't happy. Uh, and so I went searching and I went searching for the wrong people, the wrong ideas. And what happened was I had three things in my life that warned me that I was on the wrong path that then shifted me onto the right. One was my dad warned me by giving me a jacket with no pockets because he said he didn't want me to be like him. My, my dad had left in the, when I was five. He was my hero, forgot my birthday when I was 10, finally gave me a birthday present, which was this jacket with no pockets saying I couldn't take anything with me when I was gone, mm-hmm. not to be the richest man in the cemetery. First warning that I was lost my gratitude and spirituality. Right. Second, uh, my best friend went golfing with me since I was nine years old, my best friend, and he said, hey man, I, I said, why don't you hang out with me anymore? He said, because I don't like who you hang out with. And I said, well, I'm not doing what those guys are doing. You know, I I just like them and they have time and they're retired like me, you know. And he said, you can lie to yourself, but you can lie to me, but don't lie to yourself. That really hit me. And just two weeks later, I lied to my wife. I was out partying with little John, the the rapper, and I came home and my, my wife truly shifted my life because she basically said, you've lost your way. You have lost your gratitude. You've lost who you were and what you're becoming, and I don't want a part of it. And so because I'd been in love with my wife for so long, she hadn't been in love as long as I'd been in love with her. I I loved her in the fourth grade. She didn't love me until much later in life. She hated me. I threw an egg at her. I don't don't blame her, but I've just adored her. I've married my dream girl. Very few guys can say that, and I believe it's destiny. I believe her mom who passed away pushed me into her in Mexico because somebody did, and I still don't know who, and that's where our relationship rekindered itself in my late twenties. But at that time I went back and I outlined those four values that I talk about. And once I did that, it became my manifestation, right? I started focusing in on everything that was happening in my life. And it took two years that bad things were continually happening, including Mm -hmm. losing over a hundred million dollar portfolio. But the minute, believe it or not, the minute I started t- taking stake in gratitude and forgiveness and accountability and inspiration and being kind, you know, all these different philosophies, the spirituality, I started to attract, you know, Warren Moon into my life and Lee Steinberg, the greatest sports agent in the world, and ran that. I attracted this woman, a, a guru in, in India, who just on an airplane told me that I needed to meditate in order to figure out vibration, that she would teach me to vibrate faster, that I could be aware of only that which vibrated equal to or less than me. And then I ran in and worked with Lee Brower, who's in a brand new movie he was filming called The Secret. And he had the attitude of gratitude and the gratitude stone. And he introduced me to Jack Canfield and Bob Proctor and nice. Vitaly and Robin and all these people which 10 years later, they invited me to be on the Transformational Leadership Council. I'm with and work with and wrote a book with Jack Canfield. And I mean, everything just started to explode. It's an evolution, my spirituality, not a revolution. And one in which I was unconsciously very spiritual and a very good person as a young age that manifested millions of dollars and helped millions of people and then had to learn lessons about my own ego Uh, that edged the goodness out of my life. And now I'm on a mission 
to empower others, to empower others to be happy. And just recently, uh, you know, I, I told people I'm going to affect a billion people. I'm going to impact a billion people and make them happy. And I believe if I can get to that one eighth of the earth, then the rest of the earth will follow because one part particle of light overtakes a million particles of darkness. Go ahead, light a match in a dark room, do the analysis, physical analysis. Well, I started realizing, man, I'm starting to get a platform, right? I don't ask for anything. I don't advertise. I give my books away. I pay for shipping. I'm not about that. What I'm about is can I teach people how to be happy? Because the number one cause of death in America, 50 years and under is suicide. So Mm -hmm. The solution to suicide is happiness. Right. You know, I know you travel with your little brother. We don't get that a lot of times. He's 15 years old. Well, he'll never forget that. You probably won't either, but he'll never forget what he's learned here on the trip with you. And what I want to do is I look at things mathematically. Because of Instagram, because of LinkedIn, because of my website, because of the speeches and the coaching and the books and the podcast, I know that eventually I'm going to get to a 1,000 people that have learned from me, impacted from me, a thousand people, how to teach a thousand people to teach their own thousand people to be happy. And when I do, a thousand times a thousand is a million. A million times a thousand is a billion. There you go. I actually have a true light, a true vision that just like if you looked at this room a hundred years ago and you looked around it and you could bring us all back a hundred years, everybody would look around this room and say, this is impossible. Right. So many totally. things, I mean, so many things are impossible 100 years ago. Well, just a few years ago before I started building a brand and a frequency on Instagram to empower others, to empower others to be happy, most people, when I told them that I'm going to impact an eighth of the earth and make them happy, looked at me as if we were 100 years early. Yeah. And now just three years, right, after my first book, I have a direct belief that almost everyone believes now because of where I'm at with my brand, that I have the capability of teaching a thousand people, impacting a thousand people, to teach another thousand people, to teach a thousand people to be happy. And they look at me like I'm not crazy now. Yeah, it's so it's so good. And, and man, there's a lot to there's a lot to unpack there. And I sorry. I, no, it's good. It's great. <laughs> That's it's my great. trick, man. You got twenty minutes, but here's like eighteen hours <laughs> worth of stuff. Right. So, good luck. <laughs> so you know, first the point of desperation, like I love it. That's how I had, you know, my spiritual awakening come into it. You know, my past with addiction. Yeah. Um, I'm with you. I just never admitted it. Right. And (laughs) having, having to become spiritual in order to find that level of fulfillment. Um, but then the next thing that I want to talk about is like, you know, not everyone listening to this or that follows you really is going to understand what we're talking about as far as vibrational frequency, the secret, the attitude of gratitude, really attracting and manifesting what you want. This is this is high level spiritual stuff, you know, and you and I have done the deep work to really address that purge out, you know, negative vibrations that are attracting things that we don't want. But for someone who is like you and I are committed to this life, yeah. right? But for someone who is interested in this life, right? They're just kind of starting to hear about it, hear about vibrant vibrational frequency, that thing, right? How does someone get started about it? How does someone start to introduce themselves to that world? What did you do to really gain this level of knowledge that you have around this topic? Right. And that's a great point. You know, I'll still talk about ego and forget that most people don't know that ego isn't just arrogance. Right. Right. I'll talk to people and say, what do you mean egos, the need to be superior and inferior, separate and, you know, fr- like, yeah. So what I always tell people is anything that you want in your life, lower the bar. First step, lower the bar. When we raise the bar, it creates resistance, creates obstacles, voids, and shortages. It's the last thing in order to effectuate a habit that we want to do is to raise the bar. In order to effectuate a habit, in order to create a new fluid uh, opening or awareness, it's lower the bar. Lower the bar to something that you can do every day for the rest of your life. When we start that process of lowering the bar, so for example, the place that I like to start is something that takes 0.1 seconds so that people can get the awareness of vibration. And that's one of the truths of the universe, which is gratitude. Gratitude makes your past bright, your present brighter, and your future even brighter than that. Uh, So I tell people, you want to change your life. You want to learn what I'm talking about. I'm going to give you a huge challenge. It may not seem like a huge challenge, but it is. I want you to say thank you before you go to bed and when, when you wake up. It takes about 0.1 seconds to say thank you, to think thank you, but I need you to do it for 30 straight days. 
I need you to do it 30 straight days. I'm lowering the bar for you, 0.1 seconds. There's yep. no cost. There's no physical attributes needed. You don't even need sight, leg, sound. You literally only have to think you need a brain and a heart. Think thank you before you go to bed and when you wake up. And what you want you to do after 30 straight days is tell me about frequency and awareness and tell me how your life has changed. Because I will tell you this, that yes, this is my journey now. I've surrounded myself with the world thought leaders that have questioned and been questioned about this issue from some of the most physical, metaphysical, quantum physical people on earth. Serious science, serious physics. And yet everybody comes to the same conclusion that there's nothing more powerful than the consistent every day, persistent without quit, persistent suit of inspiration or truth your potential and the way to get there is through gratitude and that gratitude is the most powerful thing i will promise anybody now if you're willing to take my challenge to do that for 30 straight days go ahead and dm me email me call me I will send you my book, pay for shipping, do whatever you want. Just quantifiably tell me that your life is not better. There's no easier way to understand vibration and frequency to make your life better than to raise it with love, truth, and gratitude. Man, that that stuff is so good. And and it's I, I think that it's very hard for individuals to understand this idea of lowering the bar. Like I, I'm so I'm so about that because right now, you know, you look at what social media is preaching, and a lot of it is, you know, not real, it's not applicable, it's not the right stuff to be teaching individuals who are on their you know, trying to get on the path to success. And so for everyone listening, this idea of lowering the bar, what happens is when you lower the bar, you are operating of a sense, you know, out of this mindset that what you have now is enough right? And when you're doing that, you're living in abundance, right? And then what life is and quantum physics, literally science is characteristic of showing you is that it will return whatever's going on internally, wherever you're vibrating at, that will return. So if you were constantly saying, I'm not where I want to be, you're going to get more of not of not being where you want to be. You're going to get more scarcity, more that feeling of not being enough. But if you say, thank you, this is enough, you're going to have a lot more of that in your life. It's just going to show up. And I, I think that Dave is just one of, literally spearheading this this movement and this this thought pattern and this frequency to everyone around. And, and, and it's been amazing to watch you do it. It's such a singularity of purpose within your brand because you look on social media and individuals are trying to do a lot. Even myself, you know, like my entire brand is around discipline and this idea of self-mastery, doing what you say you're going to do regardless of the circumstance. But it took me a long time to get there and I was all over the place. And what I what I what I love about you is that it's always it's always been single task focus and it's been it's been full speed. Why when you got onto social media? Because there was a million ways you could have gone. I mean, you're one of, you know, the most notable names in sports. You've created, you know, millions and millions of dollars in revenue, net worth, all of it, everything. You could have done a lot. You could have gone a lot of ways, man. Why this one? You know, it's that frequency question that we're teaching your your brother. Uh, for me, I wanted to go with the highest frequency, meaning that everything that I talk about is applicable to the technology that, that I started my career in or the law degree that I have or, of course, the sports world that I'm in. And what I found was, just like Napoleon Hill did in the you know TV show, movie, and right. book, Think and Grow Rich, which I'm now a part of, ironically, but just like he did, I was looking for the common thread. So in actuality, instead of kind of segregating myself, separating myself as, oh, and branding myself as, oh, that's the guy that was the CEO of the first smartphone. Oh, that the guy that was Lee Steinberg's CEO. That was Warren Moon's partner. That's the guy that does elevator pitch or the podcast or whatever. It, right. It's simple. That's the gratitude guy, right? Th that is the guy that's trying to empower others to empower others to be happy. And that applies to everything. So I can take on my podcast from Danica Patrick to Ray Lewis to the CEO of TaylorMade or Fitbit or any other company in the world. I just did John Paul DiGiorio, for example. Mm -hmm. And every single one of them, when I get to their playbook to success, talks about the consistent, persistent pursuit of their potential, their truth. And all of those stories, just like the Olympics, in order to get to the Olympics, the reason the Olympics are such good TV is there's these extraordinary stories mm -hmm. about everybody that's there. Right. Well, that's what I do. I'm just telling extraordinary stories. I don't have to stand in front of fancy cars that I own or don't own or a fancy private jet that I own or don't own or a big fancy mansion. I've had all of those things. Yeah. And all they brought me was exactly what I didn't want. And I do want to talk about, because you're exactly right, you put your faith into what you want. 
Too many people put their faith in what they don't want and they're surprised when they get it. I believe faith is a currency just like money. It's an object of energy in which I put into the flow. The difference is I don't use Amazon for my currency. I have something that's much bigger that holds it everything for everyone. And I call it the field of intention. You can call it the big box in the sky, but it does. I, I believe faith is a currency. It's an energy you put into the flow and it's the aggregate of what you think, what you say, what you do, what you believe, and the unconscious competencies of your personality traits, your characteristics, obsessions, and addictions, and personality traits, right? That's an unconscious competency that you can change, which you have yep. through your own personality, and then also the energy you carry. And those unconscious competencies are truly vibrating the fastest. That's why I meet so many people, and so have you, and everybody else out there, that think, say, and do, and believe all the right things, but don't end up with any change, any acceleration or exponential growth, they end up in the same place because the true faith is the aggregate of the conscious, subconscious, and unconscious, the aggregate of all of those things that allows you to rapidly and accurately attract with action, allowance, the aggressive behavior that goes beyond action, the aggressive behavior that goes beyond surrender, Allowance means that not only am I taking action and surrendering to the universe, but I'm also aggressively attacking my ego so it doesn't create resistance, void shortages, and obstacles to confuse my faith, to put faith in what I don't want, fear-based, fear of loss, scarce thoughts, and when I get what I want, that's when I'm happy. Yeah, I love it. I love it. And so the, there's one more topic that I, wa I, I want to touch on before we wrap up here, and it's one that I am... Uh, I consider myself to be very good at and very passionate about, and I consider you to be a, kind of at the top of the game in this, and that is time management. <laughs> yeah. um, so, you know, productivity, focus, getting shit done, right? Yeah. You're one of the best I know. You have really set standards around what you do and what you do not do, right? If you were to give a bit of advice to the young individual who seems to be very busy, what would that be? How do they get clear on if they're, because they, they when guys come in to work with us, right? They think they're working a lot. We break it down. They're working, you know, about half as much as they think. But everyone is very good about at lying to themselves about what they're doing, right? How can you get ultra clear about what you're actually getting done and set yourself up on a path to be efficient? That's awesome. First, understand time. There's two times. There's pragmatic man-made construct time of 24 hours and in, <laughs> in, in infinity, right? So you got to understand that. Two. There's only one lens to look at time, whether it's the man-made construct of time or infinity of time. Mm -hmm. That's productivity and accessibility. So you have to look at all your time, how much value am I providing? Because I won't allow you to lie to yourself when you're like, I'm using my time to produce value and how accessible am I? Meaning how accessible am I to others? And how am I accessing or attracting what I want or allowing or surrendering or getting what I want? So productivity and accessibility within the context of the two different time zones, pragmatic time and infinity of time. And so once you put it into that, things like work take on a whole nother meaning. So for example, I don't believe in work. I believe in activity you get paid for and activity you don't get paid for. And if I'm productive and accessible within the activity that I get paid for, I'm going to make more money. There's nobody that is in activity that they want to get paid for that wants less money. Yeah, right? right. Even if you believe like me that everything comes through me for others, I want more money. Totally. Right. So what do I do in order to effectuate that? I'm a student of my calendar. What does that mean? I study my time. So I study every day. I don't look at my calendar. I study it. What am I doing with the lens of productivity and accessibility in person, on the phone, via email and media, radio, print, TV, social media, all of them. And not only am I looking at what I have scheduled with rules, like my 520 rule, which yep. pisses off every interviewer I have because <laughs> I try to keep every single phone call to five minutes and every interview and meeting to 20 minutes because that's why I could take five in a day in the time that most people just take one. Look, if you're on the phone more than five minutes, you're visiting, brother. You're visiting. You're not productive and accessible. If you want to be a visitor, then go visit on visit hours that's what my nights and mornings and my weekends are for to visit with people that I love to fulfill that part of my productivity and accessibility yep. but when I'm in the core of doing activity to make money I need to be efficient effective and statistically successful in order to be that I need to have an objective to keep it at a 520 rule yep. second and last point to the student of your calendar do it now when you understand the connection between infinity and the pragmatic 24 hours that you do, doing it now, besides studying your sleep, which is eight hours a day for most people, that's a whole nother activity. You right, spend right. as much time as you do with the activity you get paid for. But more importantly, 
doing it now. Let me tell you how doing it now effectuates the infinity of time. If you take everything that comes and you attract into your life, whether it's scheduled or unscheduled, when I study my calendar, I study the white space in my calendar, right? Because if I'm looking and you tell me, hey, Dave, I need you to do this for me, I ask myself, can I do it now? Including in an interview, I might text somebody because I don't want to forget and I know if I do it now, I've saved at least twice as much time. Every time you do something immediately, you save at least twice as much time because you do it now. And more importantly, you're more statistically successful. So you won't forget it or have to keep on doing it three or four times to do it, right? Yeah. And more importantly, if you can't do it now, have a repository, somewhere to put the do it now. So text yourself or email into a box. Then in the white space of your calendar, go back and reprioritize your do it now folder by importance. That's what creates urgency. You do the most important thing first, according to your values, and then work down the do it now folder. And all of a sudden you can exponentially grow and accelerate. Why is that important? If we were running a race by laps, you might be 10 times faster than me in the first lap. But if I concentrate on acceleration and exponential growth, meaning when I'm running, all I'm trying to do is get faster and have longer legs. So my strides are longer. It's just a matter of time before I walk you. A matter of time, because if you're running your fastest, you might even get tired by the second lap and I'll just keep on lapping. So what makes us tired? Ego makes us tired. How do I stay inspired the whole day? It's because every time you have a need to be right, separate, offended, guilty, resentful, angry, frustrated, any of the feeds of the ego, imagine if you and I are racing and I run a 10 minute mile and you run a five minute mile, right? And I will beat you because you don't know how to unpack your ego, meaning ego creates resistance, void shortages and obstacles. Let's say that every time you're frustrated, angry, fear of loss, anxious, separate, inferior, superior, all the different needs of the ego, imagine if that was five pounds on a backpack on your back. Right. How long will it take? Even if I'm just steady Eddie at 10, if I keep the ego out of it, I will be kicking your butt within laps. And what happens though, is if I keep the ego off of me, that allows me to have that acceleration and exponential growth while most people are slowing down yep. and they're focused on the wrong thing. In other words, that's the analogy to faith. When you're putting faith in the wrong things, you're slowing down. When I'm putting faith in the right things, I get acceleration and exponential growth that allow me to be consistent, persistent, and stay inspired in the pursuit of my potential, my truth. Yeah, that's great. That's great. I love it, Dave. Man, I really appreciate it you having us on uh, out here to your office. So before we wrap up, if you were to leave one, la one last thing, because I love how applicable everything that you talk about is to everyone, even the time management stuff applies to everyone. Spiritual stuff definitely applies to everyone. If, you, if there was one thing, if you had to put that one thing out there for everyone to do next, and let's, let's take it outside of the scope of saying thank you, yeah. right? What would that or, be? Or being kind, right? Yeah, right. Let me at least get that pitch in. Be kind <laughs> to your future self and do good deeds. But let me just tell you, the most pragmatic thing to accelerate and exponentially grow, it's the easiest thing in the world, ask for help. Boom. Learn one question. And I'll give you the question to ask. It's not just some broad BS old man telling you, go be of service and volunteer. No, I'm not saying that at all. What I'm saying is specifically, Everyone you meet in person, on the phone, via email and media, radio, print, TV, and social media, everyone you meet that you can, just ask one question. Do you know anyone that can help me? Just ask that question. The natural side, you'll be able to help them too and you'll be of yeah. service. But I'm telling you, you want to exponentially grow, ask as many people. Most people today know on average at least a thousand people that can help you. If you just ask that question once a day and you're Cole's age, that's 31,000 extra people in his network every single month at 15. Imagine if he asked four people a day. Right, that's 124,000 people he's building his network every month. Simply in humbleness, radical humility. Man, do you know anybody that can help me? I'm looking for this or I need help with this. Imagine Radical what humanity. would happen. That's the best piece of advice. And I wish people ask me, what would you tell your 15 year old self? Like Cole, that's what I would tell myself. And I'm 51 right now. And guess what I'm going to tell myself when I'm 55 and remind myself because I don't do it all the time. And every time I do it, it's sick. 
right? I just got a note up there, which I'll show you afterwards. This guy was teaching that. He left my little mastermind at Thrive where I did that mm -hmm. keynote. He bought my dinner with Ming Tsai at Nobu because he goes, you know what? I got on the call with my biggest customer, an automobile manufacturer, and I said, hey, do you know anyone that could help me? I'm looking to expand the business. They're like, actually, we need some more stuff in San Diego. We can help you. Hmm, nice. Millions of dollars of business, right. one question. If he didn't ask, they might have thought, maybe we'll get someone else in San Diego. Oh, is that guy in San Diego? Yeah. You never know. Ask for help. That's great. That's great. Probably great dinner at Nobu, too. Yeah, it was awesome. <laughs> My yeah. wife appreciated it. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's great. So, Dave, I appreciate you, man. I uh, This has been awesome. This has been awesome, and I want to be respectful of your time. So we will wrap it up. For everyone listening, I will link all of Dave's, uh, all of Dave's socials in the description, whether you're watching this on YouTube, listening to it on iTunes, SoundCloud, whatever it is, I will make sure that you know where to find Dave. He has already made sure that he's very accessible and easy to find. Dave and I literally connected through Instagram DM, did it, did an Instagram live together, and uh, now we're here. It's exactly how you manifest that thing. I knew that I wanted to meet the David Meltzer, and here we are. So, guys, ask for help. Get after it. And stay consistent. Stay consistent. There <laughs> you go. Discipline.